I'm gonna what we're gonna do is we we'll import our models, our model for the topology. So here's our still importing one million vertices from photogrammetry objects. So now obviously it's all rotated, we need to align it properly so it would be nice to work with. I usually scale it up and move it to the center of the world and that's more or less what I need. I will leave it as is here so afterwards when I want to do uh, baking it will be already in place uh, so I usually go for obj was the folder is it's here and here we go so now we're exporting it I haven't changed anything it's just the uh, rotation so it's facing up and it's just bigger scale so while we're waiting we load up for the code I'm not sure which one to load So we wait a bit more, it's not done yet. And done. Okay, go back to the code, perform for topology, and I usually go for import huge reference mesh. And now find the folder again. And load the object which is aligned properly. You could do that in here, but uh, why do you directly in Max, or you could do it in Maya or whatever, in Blender, um, is so I would have an object that I would import, now low poly, topologized, and high poly, and they are just perfectly aligned in the same place. Okay, so back in 3D code, I would just go to render and just add some material only so it's easy to see. Okay whatever material, whichever works, that's fine. We go back to the top of, and I usually start with strokes. So I choose strokes, and our navigation is done with Alt and the right mouse button or left mouse button for orbiting and left for zooming. So now what I would do is I would, where should we start? I would just create first polygon that I'm gonna use to create polygons later. So in this case I'm gonna do really low poly thing, just one one polygon. So you say I have four strokes, they are intersecting. That's all I need. Hit enter and I have a quad. Now just to choose quad tool, select the edge and you see I'm already in the quad tool. I'm just building my quads here. So now in this case I'm gonna go really low poly because all I need basically here oh sorry that's probably I will make a triangle people will be angry at me but yeah here we go sorry but I mean this model is supposed not to be subdivided why would you care about triangles in this case especially here because we will use alpha to, you know, cut off all these things. So, I'm just trying to find most outer points for my fern here. So sometimes you see these quads don't want to get to, to, to be drawn properly. Yeah, let's do it like that. You know, I guess that's, you see, the surface bends quite a bit, so maybe you should uh, do something like that. And again, some people will kill me saying, oh, ugly triangles. Yeah, just one triangle. Again, ooh, careful. 
on the edges. You don't want to happen like that. So here now I should either separate it or have this huge polygon here. I probably will separate will be two separate parts here. Here we'll end up with more triangles. But again, since the mesh is never gonna be subdivided and it's not gonna be animated, I mean, unless a little wobbling here and there, not real animation, just some noise might be, wave animation or something. Let's see if that's now that's a different plane, so again. We'll have the separate leaf separately. Like that. Careful here. Yes, good. Most outer point. And again, back in 3D Max, I will use the outer edge and I will extend it. So I would just make sure that all those small bits fit. Here, pretty flat, but maybe we'll just still make this cut here. Oh, and for delete edges, delete edges, we get rid of that, it's not needed, and some people will be more happy without seeing triangles. Separate planes, maybe I should divide this as well. So here when you make, <coughs> when you want to have a triangle, you move the pointer back to the first step, vertice to to kind of make sure it's not quad and it's a triangle. If that's what you need. Okay. Oh, you see this leaf here? It goes down. And I guess we will take it. And the good thing about this leaf going down is that it adds variation. But since we have only one fern fern uh, bush, whatever you call it, it is pretty distinctive detail and it might be, you know, if I repeat, if I copy many of these plants, it could be kind of visible. Here I tried to subdivide, but you see, it's no point, it doesn't have, doesn't have any surface variation here, so maybe the flat is good enough here. Back to quads. And let's take care of this part. So here, most outer point, and here. Is it enough of one polygon? Oh, it's enough of one polygon. Ooh, be careful. So in this case, we try to get as little polygons as we can. Okay, do we need a? A tip, uh, not a tip, uh, uh, this branch. Probably we do. So I didn't create it here accommodation for this, so now I'm just doing whatever. Like this, and now let's think. Delete edges, the button, delete edges. And people should probably use spacebar with quick selection of things. Somehow I forget it, forget it all the time. So you can add tools to, oops, sorry, as you see, we can add tools to this, to this menu here. Now let's have, so maybe it's not cool to have just one plane, I'll try to have two planes, kind of, so it's not very flat. So it would be more visible for more angles when we have already this low poly object in our game engine. Oops, we don't want that. Now it's of course tricky when those distances are small. You would have to either zoom in. You probably should move this vertex. Again, space, uh, space, move. Now you see the influence circle is kind of big, so middle mouse button to scroll it down and move it where you want it. Back to quads. And 
I'm finish off with this small branch. I probably don't need many polygons here, three will be enough for, for the length because it doesn't really bend that much. It's kind of almost flat, just a tiny bit of variation. And you see I still have problems here and here. It doesn't accommodate, the model doesn't accommodate the, these parts of leaf. Uh, yeah, let's have a triangle. Maybe here and here. Hopefully our extrusion of edges at the max here will cover this. Now you see this double line, it just shows that something is not welded, so just take move tool, just move a bit. Oh, and that's not the reason, that's here I have a point for some reason. Yeah, we got rid of it. Now obviously you see here we have bending, which is not represented in our low poly thing. So I will cut it like this, and like that, and like this. It's a bit better, not so good still. Move. Oh, I forget to use this quick menu. Uh, I don't accommodate this leaf here. So I have to decide. Do I make another edge loop, another thing? Yeah, maybe let's do so let's create this weird quad which is normal modeling, it would be not good to have that uh, technically it's a quad, but it looks like a triangle I don't know if you do like that that's probably a bit better okay should we move this a bit out here? here we go, so we have a first move now again here I could continue, let's continue from here, or maybe better I go again to our stroke tool, strokes, and zoom in, and where should we start, I don't know, uh, no idea, this will be a quad, enter, and you see it's in different color, it just tells us that it's not connected to the third, first um, object. Mm, not sure what to do here. Nah. Just do it like that. You see the planes are really shifting here, so this will be this polygons will be totally black in our alpha map. It really connects to this one, maybe it will be just one model for us in one piece. I'm not gonna separate it, so I'll treat it as one. The difference is very small, that will be represented in normal maps. A wonderful triangle for people to get angry at me. Uh, let's move this. Uh, you see that it auto selects edges here, so on the top we can say it's auto, it's edges, or it's vertices. So I prefer vertices always. But some of you li might like something else. So we should always inspect the geometry. Do I really need an edge? I want just to see if it really bends or it doesn't. Kind of. Oops, sorry. That was not snapped. Here it is. Another triangle. And maybe we will not do a triangle, but we will just move this one out here. This one here. Now let's connect this one just with the move tool. Back to quads. Most outer point I can find to snap it to it's pretty flat surface and again here uh, I'm not sure what to do I'll probably get rid of this polygon it's really ugly it might be yeah I'll delete delete polygon delete edges no delete polygons get rid of this and you see it's a separate model no separate part of model Support color, but we'll connect it just in a minute. 
twist in a minute. So let's do like that. Like that. Okay, now it's a bit too much to model each leaf. Maybe I should just connect them all. It will be easier to deal with with outline when I want to extrude to select the whole outer edges. Oops, careful with that. Sometimes it just happens. I'm not sure why. It's like working with fossil. Looks like a fossil to me. Okay. Most outer edges. Most outer edges. Connect. Here again, I'm not sure what to do. Should I connect it here? Probably not. Oh, shit. No idea. We'll make sure that edges, the vertices align with the leaves here better. Something like that. Uh, I will not try to make each leaf here anymore. It doesn't make any sense. And all these leaves kind of follow one curvature, more or less. One could be approximated as one surface. You see, it's almost flat. Could argue that these polygons are wasted. And probably that's true. Of course, I would like just so the model looks nicer to have more or less the same size of polygons. So, my build just sacrifice a couple of vertices and have too many of them, even though it could, in theory, simplify things even more. So, you could argue, you know, modern graphics cards can handle lots of polygons. Why would I care about each one of them? But you know, things like grass, I want to have a lot of it to convincingly cover uh, area of the surface. So we just multiply and multiply and multiply. At the end of the day, all these vertices add up. So maybe it makes sense to kind of be more ergonomic and try to use as little as possible. That's, that's of course, I don't know. Who knows what's the right thing to do? Okay, that's careful. That's not nice. That's not nice. If I move it down here, I will lose this height here. That's what we'll do. So this area is ugly. I don't get rid of this triangle by just splitting it here. Here. Does it work here? Yeah. Now we create a quad here. And get rid of this line here. Delete edges. In theory, it's a quad. And these I'm not even sure we need. So here you see there is a pretty difficult difference. I mean, the surface is bending, and my model doesn't represent that. Maybe I'll need to have a cut here. Uh, no, that's ugly. Not sure what to do. Maybe I'll have to do like that, like that, and here it's pretty flat, so I'll just go like this. Can we get rid of some triangles here? Probably. Move this one over here, and get rid of this edge. To the edges. Okay, we definitely don't need this one, it's pretty much good. That's fine, that's a bit ugly. Whatever might be, maybe we'll leave it. So here, maybe we should have something that kind of separates this leaf with this one. Yeah, maybe it will be good enough for normal maps. We can do it in normal maps. So the last leaf left to do, back to quads. And just try to see where the curvature bends most, and that's where I will make our edges 
something like that. So I'm not sure. It's much higher than the stem, so maybe I will create another polygon here. So here, not sure again what to do. Maybe, maybe we will separate these two. So they're somewhat in different planes. Till use okay. Yeah. Let's just have one of them. No, not sure what to do. Let's go like that, like that. Do we really need that? Mm, probably not. That's be more ergonomic. Bigger polygons, less polygons. Huh. Okay, this starts to really be in different levels. I'm not sure here. And we'll get rid of that edge later on. Oh, sorry. Can we have no control separate these two leaves as well? Just looking for most outer points. Should we connect this? Not sure. Okay, now do it edges, do it edges, do it edges here. But we get it off this one, I guess. Come back to quads. Oh, that's ugly. What do we do? Um, let's make this most outer, and the same goes here. Most outer edge. Once. And it's not nice <laughs> if we have like a point here and we want to make a quad but this vertex will be kind of almost in the same line so 3d code will try you know to simplify and just make a straight line so we need to do like that we could delete that edge later on. Move, 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 move. Move. It would be nice to have short, but I'm not sure does it work here. Delete from first squad to the second two, yes. I think it's also not the default uh, alignment of this tool. Tools, I think I. Oops, sorry. Alt. I already changed it to my liking. So the quads is important tool for me. So it's at the top. Most outer points. Out. I meant alt. Okay. Maybe it's kind of I should be more consistent. I should either, either create each small leaf separately or just have them as planes. Now I'm kind of somewhere in the middle, some of them are separate, and some just form one big plane. I'm not sure that's good. Oops, you see, it stick to the glue to the bottom. Uh, we need upper surface here. Quads. So from this we'll make a stem. And come on, it's almost done. Here. Oh, not sure what to do. I will just move this point up. 
No, it's a bad idea. Now it doesn't stick to the right surface. There you go. Kind of. Hopefully normals will fix that. There you go. It's kind of a big surface shift. I'm not sure it will it work. Something like that. Okay, here. It's almost flat. Maybe we could rid of this one. Ah, let's leave it. So, like this. As you say, we want to have two polygons for stems, kind of height, so it will be visible from more angles and it would not disappear if it's just a flat line, flat polygon. And we connect those, you go here, no, yes, and you see, now it's one model, one model, you come here, yeah, this is not a nice quad, it's not so nice, again, pose, which is exactly what we have here, but again, nobody's gonna subdivide the model, so maybe that's fine. Okay, any mistakes here? Probably it's more or less okay. So now I will export it. Uh, file, export a top object, and I usually say it's RE, so for topology. Save, go back to max, file import. Import RE, yes, and now you see it sits in the same surface, same space with the original model. Now, what I like to do is just isolate it, Alt Q, and we go to converted polygons so we can have more wonderful tools here like border. Select the border now, obviously, let's everything. We don't need everything. Control convert the selection to edges. Now we get rid of everything. Oh, let's make it darker material so it's easier to see. Just whatever we don't need highlights here. No, get out of here. Okay, so now we want to make these outlines. We get rid of everything. Alt and click and drag to deselect things. Oops. So here these two leads are connected, so we'll just make sure. I think it won't work, it's, the shape is too complex to do that. Normally I would just, you know, like select, uh, if it's a simple shape. Select the outline, scale, shift, hold shift and scale. That would work. Now the shape is too complex. So what I'll need to do is more work. Select this, shift, extrude. Select this, shift, extrude. Do I need that? Let's go back to here and see. It's pretty much good as it is. You know what? I'm not going to do that. It's again, we are increasing poly, poly count quite a bit. What I'll do instead is I will just take a screen. Uh, projection or whatever it's called, I'm not sure. Screen, so it depends. It's always where our kind of depends on the viewport. I'm trying to look from top and just extend it a bit like that. So I couldn't do it in, in oops. Oh, you see, there is a problem here. They are not one thing, so collapse them. So I couldn't do that in. in the, pretty code because it would snap to surface and there is no surface here. I want to go a little bit out of where actual surface is. And just extend it a little bit. Make sure that we always are looking from kind of top. So we want to be a tiny bit bigger. We can actually have original object. Nah, 
not so easy to see like this. Uh, sorry. We want the subject to be isolated. Alt Q. Vertices. So now it's the heart. You should not forget where you started and where you're going. What is done and what's not. Just extend it a tiny bit so everything fits. All the tiny leaves when we create a texture. After we do that, that takes quite some time. Now, of course, if I wouldn't have done these leaves separately, my life would be much easier just to work with one plane. Was it worth it? I don't know. Do we really use two edges? Might be let's get rid of the target weld. Or not. Target weld. You come here. Doesn't work for some reason. Control. Collapse. Doesn't work. Why? And there is something wrong here. Oh, that's what's wrong. You see? Three edges. Three vertices. So we collapse here. And I'll just collapse these as well. And not extend it a bit more. We just simplified. We got rid of a triangle. And we get a simpler model. Now, if it, you know, I'm going a bit out of the, uh, the mod, uh, this low poly model is becoming less and less exact to the high poly model because of these modifications I'm doing right now, because they are not, you know, it's kind of just approximation, but I think it's, it won't have any negative consequences for baking. It's still more or less corresponds to the, to the high poly object. Should optimize my work here and just try to select more edges. But one other benefit of doing vertex by vertex is I'm just selecting one vertex, and if there is a mistake there and there are actually two of them, I would immediately notice that. And if I were to select edges, everything would be selected together, everything would work move together, and I would not notice if there are ugly triangle but less vertices. We are almost there. Mm -hmm. In this case, I cannot move it. Oh, maybe we can like this. Because if I move it like right here, it really alter. I would move it in a wrong plane with my screen, whatever it is. Uh, reference coordinate system. Okay, move that out of it. Oh, come on. Oh, oh it's gone. So, uh, move that out of it. So the last leaf. Obviously here you could make some sort of automation here. 
Okay. Here is I spotted a mistake. If I were on the other hand work a bit more automated way and we just oh, let's select edges, let's select some edges and let's move them away. I would never spot it a mistake here. Of course I would weld everything anyways just to make sure that there are no kind of vertices close together so that might be fixed in that process of welding everything by a specific distance so just in a moment I will show how it works so now we are checking all these vertices at the outline but we have no idea maybe here are two vertices by mistake we don't know that uh, we'll see how to fix that just with one click click one or two clicks now here I will cheat a bit just because I don't want to change my viewport so much and I presume there's no mistakes there I still need to change the viewport whatever now where did I start it? I have no idea where I started I think it was with that leaf so hopefully that's done Okay, so let's imagine we have some mistakes, some vertices that are really close by together. Let's create a situation like that. So here, let's say we have a mistake. Let's pretend there is no this edge doesn't exist, and we didn't spot it that these two are really close by. So what I want, what I like to do is just select everything and weld by the distance, and now increase the distance till I lose. Yeah. Here I lost something. I go back, and now of course it won't help because this good, well, good vertices are even closer together than my mistake. But usually, you know, that would fix. In this case, it doesn't. So I'm just gonna do. Here it is. So one more way of checking if my model is correct is modifiers a shading STL check and I check everything 201 errors and that counts open edges open edges is are these edges so no errors for spike no double faces no multiple edges so to me it's no mistakes now for unwrapping I could do it back in here very simple to do it here just by marking UV paths. So I would separate, let's say, this one here, enter. I would separate this. Oops, sorry. It tries to continue with the same line, so I have to hit escape. This and this. Oh no. Hit enter. And you see it kind of separates the colors again. Sorry, it starts from the last point. Enter. Now I will separate, no, escape, click, or should I cut it, not sure, here, click, and now these stems should be separate as well, no, escape, click, click, so it tries to continue from last point, that's why sometimes I need to hit escape, so it will start a new, a new scene, and just unwrap, and here is the result. Or I could do here in 3 Max, whichever you prefer. So again, I'll do the same with fires, UVs, unwrap UVs, open the editor. Oh, where is this? I don't know. Okay, so now we do the same thing. Mark seam to seam selection. I'm sure, should we do vertices? Probably doesn't matter. Seams, point to point seams, we do the same. I would shower. Whichever works for you is that's good. That's good. And that will be good. Separate here. I will just separate it here. And I'll use two leaves. Probably separate them here. Who knows? Now what I like to do is I'll just grab everything. Building bones, everything. Now I should of course select just one part, belt it, wrap it, whatever the name is. But 3D Max will randomly cut the seams and randomly choose one of them and belt one of them. Oh, I have problems. 
Sometimes actually it happens that you just say commit and just try it again. Relax. We can pelt or relax. Pelt usually works nicer, less less mistakes, like the small fingers are always unfolded, but it distorts much more. So for this I would just like to relax uh, and select the element because it's already separated. Relax, commit, relax. Looks good. Maybe there is some overlap. We'll have to fix that. Select one stem. Relax. Commit. Now you see that the stem is really bigger. Bigger than it should be. We will fix that in automatic layout step. Whatever it's called. Let's do it. Tools. Pack UVs. That's how it's called. Pack UVs. And is it optimal? Nah, kind of. So now let's look for mistakes. So no select the element, just select vertices and no elements. And you see we have some overlap here, so we'll have to fix that. Now of course the more you move this away, the kind of the more you'll get the more distortion you'll get. So try not to move it too much. Okay, I don't see any problems here. Do you? If you do, it's too late. Okay, I like it. I think it's fine. So, collapse to poly. So, all UVs are inside, but we don't have access to them anymore. And I just go for file, export, export selected, and I usually write the UVs. You don't want question marks. UVs save export. Okay, so now let's go start with baking. So I have my low poly object and there's my high poly object. Now I want to do a baking. So in this case I'm using Max 17, 2017, just because I used to work with mental ray. I know it's dead, I should move on to our mode or whatever. But if it works, why to fix it? Or who knows, maybe I should move. Anyway, so I select the local object, I hit zero, or I hit render, uh, and it's render to texture. So now what I would want to do is enable projection mapping and pick my high poly object, which is called default. Actually, before I do that, it's a good idea to rename my object because all my textures will be or a topo group one diffuse color or whatever, whatever. So I select my little poly, and this is our fern. How do you spell it in English? No idea. Fern, fern, fern leaf, fern. Ah, it'll be just fern. So zero again. Oh, you see this mess? It tried to do a cage automatically. It usually. I don't like what it does, so I just reset the cage and push and move away a little bit. Now on this flat object it's a bit hard to understand what does it do. We'll just go with this. <laughs> so what else do I need? Alright, I need to set the textures, what I want to render. Oh, also options. We probably will unclick this one. Uh, I hope there won't be any mistakes. Nah, maybe for the first time we leave it. So, set up, and in this case I want my NVIDIA, oh sorry, not iRay. Yes, yes, it doesn't support. I want Mandel Ray. And I will turn off Global Illumination. I don't find it helps in this case much, because there is nothing to work with. Bounce off, light, there is no more objects in the scene, and it just makes everything slow. So I'll get rid of that. What I need then? Use existing, use existing UVs, that's correct. Add texture, so the food map, normal, height, and ambient occlusion. That's what I use. That's why I need mental ray right here for ambient occlusion. Others would work with probably even scanline render. So normally I would go with 8K textures, but this this probably doesn't need that at all. Oh, no 
num logs num log this one 1496 1496 oh, I should just copy that just hit this thing paste that paste that and paste that all right now where does it oops where do we do it so I uh, choose the folder which is the same folder as my stuff and I'll just leave it at Targas uh -huh. and here the wonderful thing of 3 Max we have a history the last used folder that's great so make sure everything is in the correct folder and you go there as well, as well. Now, there are things that occlude each other, so I might need to add lights. I will try to do it without lights, and if you see if this is, you know, a bit too dark, we'll have to add lights. So we hit render, continue, and go to sleep. Okay, so see me, we see me the mistakes is this sleeve here. It was bent down, it's just black, so I will need to do it again with lights now also we see here we have a cut cut uh, everything is cut but i presume it connects here we'll double check that so probably that's fine let's have a look so we go to uvs uv coordinates uv unwrap and let's see. here at this line this polygon is okay this edge is connecting to what? It doesn't show here. Oh, to nothing. So it is a problem, is it? Where is our render output? Oh, come on. Here it is. So yes, this is a problem. I need to extend the model, not to lose this area. Any other problems? So just this and the lights for that. Should be more or less okay. Maybe here I would sh should extend as well. So let's do that. Of course, we will destroy our projections and UV should be fixed after that as well. Uh, what was that? Uh, just so I can visually see what's going on, I'll just put this map on my object. I think it's not. Let's see the first color. Let's grab it to diffuse. Oh, come on. It doesn't work like that. So we need to plug it here, make it sure it's visible. Oh, uh, what did I. Come on, my mouse is. And we apply this. Oh, come on. Apply this to film. Okay. So now, when I move things, my vertices, of course, everything will get stretched. So, the problem is here. This is the one that is supposed to connect. Hopefully it is, I'm not sure. So, so I should probably see the high poly object as well. And it's this area here. So, one to actually move it out. So it accommodates the sleeve here might be even more so that was one problem and next problem is this sleeve which is bent down actually yeah, okay so now my uv stretched as well by moving these vertices the uvs are you know the ver corresponding vertices in the uv map stretched as well I think in this case it's not a problem. So now we'll use very simple lights, just standard lights, omni lights, and the intensity. I usually like to make a small intensity and more lights. 0.01. Yeah, 0.1. Now 0.1. Does that work? Oh, come on. That should work. Yes. Top viewport. Where was the sleeve? I presume it's here. Perspective, yes, it's almost there. So 
So we need lights for you here. Well, I don't know, three, four lights of point one value, two, three, four. Four lights should be enough. Any other complicated areas? Maybe since I already made these slides, I will put one there. Okay, and we do everything over again. So, our low poly firm, where are you? Let's turn this on. Hopefully that will be fine now. So again, zero. Everything is still the same. Oh, this one from as a projection, and everything is the same here. So we just hit render, and it asks so what we want to write. So one, qu one quick note here. Uh, since I already added a couple of lines, but not lines everywhere. There are lights there on some reason. So this part might become too dark. You might want to add more lights, or what I want to usually do, I select the object, original object, like poly object, and not only use this texture for diffuse, but also for self-illumination. That usually fixes many things, so you don't need to care about I mean, it's kind of dirty, fast trick, and it works sometimes. So I guess for more complex objects, where you have more creases, more valleys, more, I don't know, things like that, it might not work. So, and of course in Photoshop I'm gonna lighten up this texture. So again, in my case, it's very kind of the same color, there's not so much uh, dark and light areas, there's not so much variance, so in this case I can get away with this. If my object would be really with full colors, there are lots of things in black shadow areas, lots of things in highlight areas, this might not work. I mean, the lighting in, in Photoshop might kind of clamp the, 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 the colors of the texture, not to say that. So it might uh, reduce the quality, so you might, want, you might not want to do that in Photoshop for more objects with more colors. So in this case, it's pretty plain, pretty simple stuff. It might work. And we see all these... all the areas where where high poly and low poly objects do not match but in my case it's always outside the actual leaf maybe in some cases it is in i will just use content aware filter in photoshop for such small problems just open all the maps here mm -hmm. okay now i have them separate files so we'll start with color uh, what i like to do here is I mean, it works for some things where the lighting conditions are not very much, like there is not too much actual shadows, actual directional shadows. So for some times, just to get the color, yeah, I'll also copy the layer so don't destroy the original. So I would like to play around with this mm, color, shadows highlights. So it kind of equals out the color. You should be very careful with this. I hope in this case it works good enough. So then from the color map what I like to do is I would like to create kind of a bump cavity kind of not really cavity actually bump probably map. So I would put black and white filter just to have it. There is nothing to control here too much probably. Is it? Is there? So of course I would want to any spots or whatever any things in the texture so everything should should be revealed nothing should be hidden so I'm looking for doesn't seem so much doesn't seem much. of course there's nothing here in the leaves there is no variation there is no veins and stuff I'm gonna leave that and now I'll make a copy of that Control shift alt e the best job in Photoshop I know so it creates a copy of everything you have and on top of that I'll just duplicate it as well and on top of that, I like to use other so filters, other 
high pass. So this will be kind of my bump map. In this case it doesn't really make any anything good because there is nothing outside outside of the I mean inside the leaf itself. Mind you these tiny tiny lines here. That's it. So in this model it won't work that much that good. So the most of from this model of course I will get from Alpha Channel. And Alpha Channel I will usually normally for the models which you know not like in this case I have to get rid of this part normally for normal models where um, you would have nice nice outlines here so I would just select color range select black very little fuzziness if, if any okay select inverse Control C I go to some other map, Control Shift V, so paste in place, Control Shift V, Control Shift V. What I do now is let's go back to let's say color. So I select control and click on thumbnail, select everything that's here, and just turn it off. We don't need it. And let's see for color. Command J to copy what is selected, and this is all we have in this layer. And all I do now is filter, flaming pier. That's a free plugin you can get from Planning Pier and Solidify as. So what it does here, it kind of extracts, you know, ah, you see it here. So that's all. That's all there is to it. I would do that the same thing for for AO. In this case AO is not very important. So normal maps make some sense here and color map of course. It doesn't work here much as well, and I will need to draw uh, alpha from this. I will start from this. So how do I do it? Um, I will try using all these, you know, magnetic lasso tool. Um, you could try to see. I mean, now that's the it's converted to black and white it won't work, but for color, let's say you have this one. You can also do selection in separate channels, might be for best. Red kind of separates it kind of well. And you could try doing all sorts of things. So select color range, let's say. So I hope that I have all the leaves are lighter than this other area. So I select the other area and select inverse. Inverse, 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 inverse. Do I have a background now? Oh, I always mix it up. Command J. Yep, I suppose I should have went back to just layers. Command J. What do I get here? Yeah, I guess. Oh, yeah. So now what I would do is I would go to image adjustment levels. Oops. I want this to be perfectly white and then our layer beneath which is totally black default D X sort the colors G uh, for bucket or gradient too oops and I need X to change it to black One, two, three. okay and from this I could start working and getting my alpha channel that's probably that's it.